Hi guys, and welcome to the Stephen King Cemetery Club. Hi guys, we last talked about The Mist, which was a very, very long short story. And next up is Here There Be Tigers, which is a super short story. And I think this is perfect. I think it is a perfect story. It is just so visceral. Like, I remember elementary school bathrooms. It's, it's really effective. It takes you back to being in elementary school. It takes you back to being a kid. And I appreciate it greatly. So the main character's name is Charles. And he is afraid to go into the bathroom. His teacher, now he's in third grade, his teacher is Miss Bird and she is a bitch and she makes him uncomfortable because he likes to use the euphemism basement for going to the bathroom and she won't let him use that term. She says, you know, you have to basically grow up and say bathroom, which, you know, we all had little things as a kid that I'm sure we didn't like to say or do and did she, I mean, yeah, he probably should learn to use the word, but in front of all of his classmates, he just is uncomfortable. On his walk to the bathroom, he is thinking about Miss Bird. Quote, old B-I-T-C-H, he thought. He spelled because he had decided last year God didn't say it, it was a sin if you spelled. Page 156. I love that thinking. <laughs> if you spell it, you're good. So this bathroom, when you walk in, there are the sinks, and then you turn the corner, and that's where the toilets are. And when he turns the corner, there is a tiger there. Quote, the tiger was laying down at the far end, just underneath the pebbly white window. It was a large tiger with tawny Venetian blinds and dark stripes laid across its pelt. It looked up alertly at Charles, and its green eyes narrowed. A kind of silky purring grunt issued from its mouth. Smooth muscles flexed, and the tiger got to its feet. Its tail switched, making little chinking sounds against the porcelain side of the last urinal. So Charles runs away. He runs out of the bathroom and he even says that he doesn't think the tiger can open the door so he thinks he's safe. So then he looks across the hall to the girls bathroom and he thinks if only I could go in there but with my luck one of the girls from my class is gonna walk in on me or Miss Bird you know someone I will get caught and I will be even further embarrassed. He's gonna he opens the door he's gonna peer in and see if he sees anything and he feels a hand on the back of his neck and it's a classmate, it's Kenny Griffin. And he has been sent after Charles because Miss Bird is saying that he was gone too long. Charles tells Kenny about the tiger and he's like, yeah, whatever. And he walks into the bathroom and is promptly eaten, eaten. So not sure what to do. Charles pees in the sink because that way he doesn't have to turn the corner, that dreaded around the corner thing and he's keeping an eye out for the tiger. Well, Miss Bird walks in on him to check on him and Kenny. She catches Charles peeing in the sink, which she is horrified by and is trying to shame him about. She asks about Kenny and he's like, I don't know. She turns the corner and Charles just lets it happen. Doesn't really warn her. He figures, why not? Just let it go. And he steps outside of the bathroom and he kind of waits around and she doesn't come out and so he walks back to class. I love that. I love the fact that he gets his last, he gets his revenge on his teacher. And this short story, like I said, it's so short, it's so perfect. It conveys that feeling of being a young kid who's scared of things and who is not taken seriously by adults. And I just love all the little, all the little details. And it reminds me of when I thought that sharks lived in my bathtub when I was little. And I kind of am reminded by Suffer the Little Children, probably because it's a crazy, mean teacher. And yeah, I think it's a great short story. You can literally read it in five to ten minutes. Um.